Well, I have finally experienced the amazement of waking up on my land. Oh my goodness, it is so gorgeous out here. It's pretty overgrown from all the rain, as you can see, and a bit of a wake-up call to what I've taken on. But I'm also grateful to see it this green, as I'll no doubt also see it in drought at some point. It's a huge project ahead to get the weeds under control with help and then maintain them. To grow gardens, keep the wild pigs out and of course get a home built. But I continue to try and stay as present and trusting as possible and, as always, connected to how I feel in myself when I am out here. And that is, I can breathe here like nowhere else. When many think me crazy for taking this on at an age when most folks are downsizing their lives, I feel a sense of homecoming that my heart has longed for ever since I left the family farm at 17. I think a part of me even longed for here before that, a place where I could feel I belonged. I am at home now, even without a house out here yet. That process is refining and evolving, but at least I was able to sleep out here, thanks to the help of my cousin Platty, who is also one of my best mates. I'm not physically able to go camping alone anymore, as there are things my body can no longer do. Even the packing and preparation to go were exhausting. But Platty goes bush camping all the time, where there are no facilities. He is also unwilling to eat crap, so turns up incredibly prepared for healthy cooking. I'm so grateful to him for making our camping trip possible. And while I consider myself a fabulous fire builder, he is a master at it. Experiencing the day give way to night allowed every cell in me to breathe a deep sigh of relaxation. Campfires have a way of drawing you in to a state of presence. Filming the night sky on video isn't easy, even for fabulous photographers. One day I may master time-lapse photography and show the night sky to you that way. But with all I've got going on, that's a bit of a distance down the priority list. So instead, I invite you to imagine about four million stars overhead instead of the four showing, one of which I think is actually a planet, and close your eyes to soak in the lullaby that is offered out here every evening. Just try it. Close your eyes and listen. How magical is that? You can open your eyes now. The orchestra swapped shifts through the transition into sunrise and a new harmonious song rang out. This was my first ever sunrise on my land. This music from the birds is wonderfully nurturing to the nervous system, calming 
magical and gentle. I tear up a little when I imagine eventually waking up to this every day. Hearing this welcome of morning allowed the rest of the world to fall away completely. My heart whispered that this is how life is meant to be with gentle morning songs from the birds to wake me from deep and restful sleep. My cousin always rises well before sunrise, wherever he is, makes a pot of tea and then writes in his journal something he has been doing every day for decades. I loved seeing him use the office desk for his own writing too. As the kookaburras laughed in distant trees, Last night's fire smouldered, ready to be reignited again in the late afternoon. Platy is so organised with his camping, and even brought corn to pop. And of course the break from technology was fabulous, with time for games and ease. <laughs> Could have got six and got her, but I didn't know until I went, that'll do me. And then I went, oh no. There's almost always a breeze at the top of the hill, but the wind picked up and an afternoon storm threatened. I love being so high that you can see it approaching or determine if it is going to go around. The rain grew closer as the wind blew harder, but there were more important things going on back at the table with a Scrabble tournament between the second cousins. The storm went around after all, And with a slash of our overgrown driveway by my kind neighbours, the games could continue while I lay back and had a little afternoon nap on the slant of a boulder. And then it was sunset again. To be able to watch the sun both rise and set is a dream come true. I grew up with that openness and have lived in a couple of other places with similar blessings. I am so grateful for the guts to buy this place. The sounds of the day gradually faded into the evening song once again. The fire was built back up, and our weary but satisfied bodies relaxed into its lull. I also took a trip to the lovely town of Tenterfield to meet up with one of my dearest friends for a night. It was great to not be doing the winding road over the mountains to the coast and staying in the New England region. It's such a gorgeous part of the world. 
I am constantly grateful to be breathing in the clean country air again, realising more and more how heavy the humidity was on my health. I took in as much of the trip as I could, remembering that being present is the greatest honour we can give to our life, to actually be there for it. The present is also where the healing of both the past and the future happens, where our hearts can be heard, our wisdom has space to surface, and our answers are revealed. Even after more than four decades of friendship, Donna and I are still never lost for things to share. Our conversations flowed naturally, in a way that is only found in old friends. We enjoyed checking out the natural area in the late afternoon, at an easy pace, before heading back into town for dinner. The whole trip was a delightful time that left my heart full. As the sun farewells each day, I now farewell you for the year. Thank you for sharing the ride of the vlog's first year. I've grown with it and love telling stories this way. But it wouldn't be half as fun if you weren't here to tune in. So thank you for what we share. Sometimes I wish I could just vlog all the time and let everything else in my work go. But life has also called me to be a messenger for the regrets of the dying and I honour that role with respect and gratitude. I'll be back sometime in February. For now though, it's the summer holidays in Australia so I'm heading offline and allowing life to have no routines for a while. You stay safe out there, and please know I am hugely grateful that you connect with my stories, and I value the time we share here. Bless you, and thank you. See you again in February. <laughs>